Namaste everybody. Welcome to our 7th episode of Clarity in Similarity. Uh, this is a platform where we try to understand the ongoings of homeopathy as a subject and as a practical reality. Today we have a very special guest with us uh, and we are very much honored to have him uh, talk on our humble platform. Today we have with us uh, Dr. Mukund Anand Udchankar uh, who needs actually no introduction but it is my duty to do so, so I shall try saying a few words about him. Uh, Dr. Mukund Anand Urchankar has been a renowned homeopathic physician and has been practicing for more than 32 years successfully. And uh, he has much success in treating musculoskeletal disorders, gynecological complaints, learning disabilities, infertility and also skin diseases. He is currently the principal of KLE Homeopathic Medical College, Belagavi, and uh, some of his Professional contributions include uh, him being a key person and instrumental in preparing BHMS ordinance for RGOHS Bangalore and he has also been instrumental in getting ISO certification for college and single-handedly for hospital attached to college in 1996 and 2001 respectively to update in ISO systems appeared and passed lead auditors course in ISO 9000-1996. He has also been an expert for Board of Studies, Goa University, has been an examiner for BHMS and MD Homeopathy for various universities. And he has also presented many scientific articles, some of which include chronic diarrheal disorders in National Conference at Belgam, diabetes and its homeopathic approach at National Conference Chitradurga, common gynecological problems at mother and child care program at Hyderabad. We are very fortunate to have him on our show today. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Aditya. Uh, sir, as uh, these, these episodes are progressing, uh, mm. we see that there is, uh, we have an ascension towards a certain uh, goal in propagating homeopathy. That is to understand the trueness of the nature of homeopathy and also to decipher where homeopathy is applicable as a viable and practical system of medicine. And I think Good. today we can uh, understand this approach through the founder yeah. himself, through Dr. Yeah. Hanneman. So, yeah. my initial question to you is, uh, who is Hanneman and why is it important to know him as a forefront, irrespective of whether you have a homeopathic background or not? Why is Hanneman important in your life? Uh, you know, at the outset, uh, Aditya, uh, let me compliment uh, uh, you and your team for taking this endeavor. Thank you, sir. For, uh, pro for propagating homeopathy as a science and uh, a most scientific method of therapy of tomorrow. Yes. Uh, uh, when you asked me this question, it goes back, the history uh, goes back uh, somewhere in the middle of 18th century. Yes. In, the, in, in, a, in a township uh, by name Mason. Uh, which had around around 4,000 residents. Hmm. Uh, that is what the history says, which who were experts in artists, chemists, painters. This town was famous for decorating china glass okay. with colors and gold and painted pictures. Right. Uh, somewhere on uh, in 90, 1753, hmm. uh, to be more specific, it says uh, 6th of April, Right. A man named Christian Gottfried Hanneman right. settled himself within uh, uh, his himself with his household. Right. His house was by name Ick House. Right. Right. He was a porcelain painter, worked in a porcelain factory. Right. And uh, it was on 10th of April 1755, his wife Johanna Christiana. Right gave birth to a third child of five children and the eldest son. Right. And they named him Christian Frederick Samuel Hanneman. And this was Dr. Hanneman who right. uh, evolved himself as a great medical man and uh, uh, contributed an alternative medicine in the, in the by name homeopathy. And today we are with that diamond science with us. Right, right. Sir, uh, so why is it important for the people to know him? Uh, as in, uh, he was the one who found homeopathy as a viable system. But even in today's world, uh, a, a, a 
common student of homeopathy might ask to Hanuman mm-hmm. was the one who did start all the uh, he, who found and uh, dug out the principles of homeopathy but why is it important to know him as a person or to know him in his reality and what he did and why is it important to know uh, the challenges that he faced uh, if you look at the entire history right hanuman hanuman uh, lived around 89 years or something Right. and uh, he his life history is so very important to know because right. every turn that he had in his young life education life his married life right. and his family front right. was was the greatest greatest uh, contribution to the science of homeopathy i i should say reason being reason being when hanuman uh, was uh, of five years of age Uh, his father his father uh, had a habit of giving his son what mm. he called as thinking lessons right this chi- this childhood habit followed hanuman throughout his lifetime right uh, and his schooling if you look at right uh, why why we should know the history of uh, uh, hanuman so very close reason being how Uh, he earned his livelihood and he came across one statement and that uh, that was the stepping stone of homeopathic science right let right. me go back on in in in, in the middle of uh, or later part of the 18th century right. somewhere in uh, 1767 to be more precise hmm. he got himself admitted in a school now that is what is known as prince school right. of that town Mm-hmm. and the, the rector of the school was master muller right master muller why we should know master muller because he was his teacher of mm-hmm. ancient languages and german composition right right he, and he treated hanuman very affectionately right. like his own son he trained hanuman mm-hmm. in many languages right this is the this is one step we should keep in mind Right. because this is going to this is going to be the stepping stone for further knowledge of uh, evolution of homeopathic science right uh, due to the poor poor financial status hanuman and hanuman had to leave the school mm-hmm. and uh, le- uh, join a, a porcelain factory as a laborer right but later on his hunger for education did not stop him right uh, uh, he joined the prince school once again with help of his fellow students and staff right in somewhere right. in 17 1775 if i'm not wrong right on on school living ceremony hmm. hanuman hanuman eng hanuman hmm. presented a oration called wonderful construction of human hand right right you just imagine the way in which this eng child was shaping itself Yes. In the year 1775, right. at the age of 20, hmm. he entered Leipzig University for his medical studies. Right. Hmm. And during this, his financial situation was not not that good. Right. And he managed his earning. Right. By teaching French, German, as well as translating books from English. Right. And because of master muller who taught him many languages right he became right. a master of almost a dozen of languages like greek latin english right. italian arabic german hebrew etc right. and the list goes on right in right. somewhere after 2 years 17 somewhere after 2 years in 1777 if i'm not wrong uh-huh. he moved from leipzig to vienna right as a medical student further for further studies and joined a hospital right. by name brothers of mercy right yes here he here he became a favorite pupil of corin von mm-hmm. dr von corin mm-hmm. he was a royal a physician of royal court right. who allowed hanuman to accompany him to his private patients right and he taught him many therapeutic things but right. after only 9 months he had to abandon his student life right right okay 1777 the same year 
he was appointed as a librarian and family physician to governor of Transylvania. Right. He stayed up for about 19 months there and hmm. learned several languages. Hmm. And uh, in somewhere in 1779, at the age of 24, hmm. he received his master's degree. Look at the entire lifespan this, uh, this soul has gone. He submitted thesis, it says, the history says in the month of August 1779. Right. And the thesis then published was of 20 pages. The subject of his thesis was, imagine a consideration of etiology and therapeutics of spasmodic affection was the title of his thesis. Yes. Mm-hmm. In 17, somewhere in 1781, he started his medical practice in, as a village doctor. Right. By in a town by uh, Hetastad in the country of Mansfield. Okay. Uh, there was no much scope, and he had to move to another place by by name Desu. Right. Now here is a turning point. Right. Mm-hmm. He, he he here he first turned in his attention towards chemistry. Okay. He started translating original medical works to Germany and started learning chemistry. Right. And the history says hmm. he was such a scholar in chemistry. Hmm. Some of his colleagues in chemistry used to say after he turned himself into a homeopath, they called him he is a quack chemist. You know, you know. Right, right. Ah, he is a quack. Yes. And a quack chemist. And they said, had Hanuman not turned out to be a homeopath and a quack, he would have been a biggest and greatest asset to the chemistry. Look at the knowledge of chemistry Mr. Right. Hanuman had. Right. And there he visited a chemist shop of Hessler. Hmm. He learned practical pharmacy over there. And there... He met his future wife, hmm. Hessler's stepdaughter, hmm. Hmm. Johanna. Johanna, yeah, in, right. uh, in, in, in 1784, somewhere, they had their eldest son and uh, the history says um, uh, they had 11 children, two sons and nine daughters, which is uh, uh, um, only a matter of history and academic interest. Right. Uh, in, in somewhere, uh, in... Uh, 1784, he published an original book on the treatment of scrofulous sores. That means Hanuman had that instinct of learning and progressing and exploring. Hmm. In 1785, he translated a chemistry book of hmm. Demachi's art of distilling liquor into volumes. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. And at that time, hygiene practice were of very little importance, which he, yes. but mm. he recommended many exercises, open air, benefits of climate, etc., et the value of cold water and remedial agent, etc., etc. Yes. Uh, then he, he was a sincere man. He was core, honest to the core. The, right. And Due to which he was greatly dissatisfied with indefinite medical knowledge and cruel methods of treatments of those days. Yeah, yeah. He almost stopped his medical practice. Hmm. He continued translating books to support his family. Yes. 1789, in order to fulfill his needs of growing family, Hmm. he moved again back to Leipzig. Due to poverty, he released his first volume, Friend of Health. That is how the history says. Right. And Hanuman expressed his agony about wrong methods of treatment at that time to his friend Hugh Flat. Right. Mm-hmm. He wrote him a letter which was published in lesser writing under the okay. title of Letter to Physician of High Standard right. on the Great Necessity of Regeneration in Medicine of something that, that kind. Right. And for next around 15-20 years, hmm. 
he the, the, the strange curiosity urged him hmm. and made him move town to town right he never stayed in one place more than few months yes yes Yes. 1790 to 1880 1804 it says about 12 years he lived in 14 different towns <laughs> definitely a wanderer yeah yes. he translated around 24 textbooks and several articles to, into germany right okay it was the time in 1790 hmm i hmm. uh, here here is the thing which starts with homeopathy Right. It was the time in 1790. Right. Hanuman was busy in translating William Cullen's a treatise on Materia Medica from English to German. Right. This book, in this book, there were around 20 pages allotted for the curative effect of Peruvian bark or Cinchona bark. Right. For the intermittent fever. Yes. It was explained. that curative power of it was due to its bitterness in small footnote of it that particular chapter due to its astringent qualities yeah yes ha huh. and hanuman was not some more hanuman was not satisfied with this explanation he right. wanted to explain ex- experiment on it yes yes and the, and and if i am not wrong history says he took around 4 drams of cinchona bark extract twice daily for several days hmm and uh, she observed malaria like manifestations including fever spasms sweat sweat etc etc now this is where the exact story of evolution of the concept of homeopathic thought started right right and he he was he was a man who could believe only if you are convinced yes 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 and he just did not take this particular uh, statement which was written in uh, uh, kalens materia medica like uh, singona bark or peruvian bark uh, leads to ego like manifestations ego means malaria yes uh, and that statement was something astonishing to him how can this happen and that is how he took that particular medicine in his in his own way for several days and then for his surprise he developed the similar kind of symptoms right now then then what <laughs> was he did not get convinced hmm. whether this is right or whether this is only a coincidence right he repeated he repeated the same thing on himself again and again the same thing proved proved in the similar fashion and yeah. then on he did not get convinced because of only one proving or say uh, uh, only on himself to confirm before uh, co- find coming to final conclusion hmm. he conducted similar experiments on his friends and other volunteers hmm. 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 as he expected all of them had the same kind of manifestations hmm. 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 and that led him hmm. to an in a, to a therapeutic saying on which hmm. our science of homeopathy bases today hmm. similia similibus curanter yes which means like like cures like yes hmm. now here here hmm. he did not stop right he said disease producing capacity hmm and this is curing capacity because hanuman was a physician of modern medicine of those days yes hmm. he, he 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 must have used cinchona bark or quinine for treating malaria during those days right and and the statement he got came across in kalens materia medica was exactly opposite yes so hmm. he, and that made him that made him start thinking thinking what exactly this means Then, when he proved all these things, he came to a conclusion right. that disease curing capacity of a medicinal substance right. is nothing but is nothing but disease producing capacity of the same in similar manner. Right. Hmm. That was that was the hallmark on which the entire 
basis of similia similibus curator is was uh, based on and that is how this particular system came into existence and it all matters the question that you asked me was so pertinent yes and this is the reason why we must know the history of animal we must know how his life was life was miserable and in spite of all those miseries right. here is a soul which could bring such a gem of science to the existence yes yeah. and, and 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 that is the reason why many times animal's history right. is just read as a history of somebody which should be correlated what exactly must be happening in those days yeah. and that inquisity of mine yeah. mine goes back to five years old hanuman when right. his father started giving him tickling things like thinking lessons thinking and that is yeah. thinking lessons that is the that is the whole process that hanuman uh, has evolved into and that is the reason why hanuman and hanuman's history and evolution of homeopathic system is very very important to know unless we correlate all these things i don't think it will be complete yes uh yeah that that was a very very expansive explanation sir and that sort of brings me as a chain question to 300 years yeah. later today yeah. we uh. see uh, homeopathy in almost a similar state as to its uh, inception in the sense that uh, there mm. are a lot of homeopaths with a different view about the subject and some of them are related to being inquisitiveness and others related to being experienced but amidst yeah. all the confusion how can we relate the situation of homeopathy today to the situation mm. of homeopathy as it was in hanuman's time and what is it that we are doing different from what hanuman did and what can uh, be done yeah if you if, if you uh, if you re- recollect what was taught in your undergraduates yes uh, hanuman had many disciples and hanuman was a man who is to be labeled as a man who considered and believed beyond doubt change is eternal yes. and he was a man with open mind and that is the reason why he went on revising his editions of organon five times yes yes he was very very open and very honest to 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 core Yes. now coming back to why are we like this today the reason being reason being yes. uh homeopathy has got a little philosophical touch yes sometimes sometimes i i i i sometimes i may i may be wrong if i say so uh mm. uh, many many times people say if hanuman had lived another 10 years probably mm. face of homeopathy would have changed mm. i would rather i would rather go 10 steps ahead and say mm. and animal lived another 10 years mm. the entire face of medical science itself would have changed wonderful yeah yeah reason is reason is mm. now let us go back mm. animal animal uh, was a man or uh, it was he who told mm. that those tiny microorganisms will govern the constitution yes mm. before robert koch invented bacteria yes and it was more than 50 years earlier hanuman had already told this maybe because maybe because there were no gadgets available to understand mm. there were no oh, via media to evaluate the progress of the disease as we have today Mm. and mm. maybe because of those things he mm. did not have that entire grip to understand the prognosis like what we do today m- a- a- mri and, uh, and ultrasound etc if they were available in those days imagine what could have happened yes yes uh, and, and and now now coming back to what you asked what is the, why is the situation today like this yes now it is only because it's only because uh we have got different schools of thoughts yes coming up coming up yes and everybody wants to say 
hmm. that what I am doing is right. Hmm. If you divide India into four quadrants, every quadrant will say my my homeopathy is the classical. <laughs> yes. This is what is the situation today. This is what is the situation. Some some somewhere around five say ten year five or six years ago, I was attending one of the conferences where a gentleman said there are seven schools of uh, uh, thoughts in homeopathic science. Hmm. Imagine what can happen. Yes. And what can happen? What can happen to a student community? Hmm. I am I am coming back to a very very painful situation. Hmm. Hmm. we are we are heading towards total confusion total confusion yes the reason being every school of thought every school of thought is propagating their own way of approaching the patient or whatever terminology they say hmm. Hmm. but can you tell me one one school of thought hmm. which is practicing homeopathy without law similars right yes all of them whether it is any any school of thought hmm. Hmm. is is practicing homeopathy their ways of reaching to that similimum may be different yes yeah. the ways of reaching but similimum is the only principle hmm. animan gave a classical approach very classical approach and he was very right very right in 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 his approach because hmm. uh if you look at the uh, the writings in organon Mm. he talks about uh, knowledge of disease or physician knowledge of physician mm. and what knowledge is uh, the physician should possess and mm. one of them is knowledge of disease now do we really yeah. go to the depth of this mm. while teaching to our undergraduates or maybe postgraduate scholars or anybody for that matter mm. Mm. have we really gone into the real uh, true letter and spirit of these particular things what did he mean by this hmm. 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 and you read you read all these aphorisms very clearly hmm. and there is no there is no way hmm. that one can differ from hanuman's way of approach yeah. and what we are doing today hmm. is what we are doing today is hmm. our interpretation hmm. our interpretation the way in which i understand Hmm. and many times i am i tend to hide i am i am coming to a very classical classical thing now hmm. is many of us many of us hmm. do not do not reveal hmm. do not reveal the secrets of our practice we yes. have got our own yes. secrets which will die with us yes yes which is very which is really a killing thing yes. people should teach the logic properly Yes. the logic properly suppose for example when somebody wants to say somebody wants to say that this is a this is the medicine what i, I gave and this is what uh, happened afterwards mm. okay fine everybody listens to that and uh, in most of the conferences we listen to this talk and my god mm. everybody puts his tongue out and uh, listens to that gentleman and say mm. fantastic fantastic and then uh, then what happens is how did he choose this medicine nobody knows yes that that he doesn't tell that he does this is where things are going wrong he, yeah. i am trying to interpret things on my own way and trying to conceal the secrets that i have interpreted mm. and i do not try to give the knowledge in a proper way mm. to the children whom i am teaching most of the time reformation reformation and revisiting is needed at colleges and institutions yes the institutions will have to will have to have teachers who are well oriented yes teachers who are who are having a passion for homeopathy and not only passion for homeopathy passion to give knowledge to the students yes it is not only passion for homeopathy which will help hmm. it is not only passion for my science which will help Mm. it is my passion to give my knowledge yes to the to the student or the to to the, to the pupil who is who, who is sitting in front of me and one thing that teaching profession or today's institutions of homeopathy should understand by giving knowledge to the students your knowledge doesn't get exhausted it always increases 
Yes. Why are we, we, we are not understanding this. This is where things are going in a different way. Hmm. Things are going in a different way. And uh, today is a high time that we, at the level of institution, at the level of institution, we as teachers in the institutions, hmm. carry a lot, lot of responsibility of okay. making things clear to the children, maybe at undergraduate, maybe at postgraduate, whatever may be the level. Hmm. The hmm. situation is only this and the reforming is required at this level. Yes, yes. Sir, you brought up a very interesting point regarding the knowledge of disease as propagated by Hahnemann. There is an age-old saying that we heard in college saying that uh, uh, anatomy is only for the first year and never again in your life. So, oh. <laughs> and some students also live by the say. So how how relevant is it that the first thing Hahnemann said was the knowledge of disease and then the knowledge of medicine and then the, the, the application of the medicine to the disease. Because absolutely. And in what way should we understand the meaning of the phrase knowledge of disease? Is it because as you said, during Hahnemann's time, laboratory findings were limited and uh, medicine has grown very vastly uh, in its uh, regarding its origin and the yeah. origins of disease. So how should we interpret the term knowledge of disease? Uh, with, yeah, Leading to one uh-huh. sub-question where uh-huh. a little bit of a controversy occurs, saying that, for example, the germ theory, right? Uh, hmm. There are uh, proponents who accept the germ theory within ho- within the homeopathic boundary, who accept the germ theory and people who don't accept the germ theory. So, e- hmm. if when there exists such a confusion, how do we interpret the phrase knowledge of disease? Uh, knowledge of disease, uh, in, a, in a true sense. Yes. You, you ask me different questions. I will answer them in yes. components. Yes. Uh, there will be one or two, two, three components. One is your pertinent logic of understanding anatomy. That was yes. your question. Yes. It's only yes. for the first year and after that, the end of the story. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, see, 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 uh, today, today, uh, if you look at, uh, the educational system that we have evolved, it's a tremendous development that has occurred. Hmm. And uh, if you look at the evolution or if you look at the logic of uh, um, progress of your uh, subjects right from first year, second year, third year, fourth year, there is a logical linkage between all these diseases which normally is normally is lost. And that is where again, that mm-hmm. is where again, mm-hmm. educational system itself, itself, mm-hmm. itself needs to be linked. There is something what is known as horizontal integration of the subjects and vertical integration of the subjects. Mm, mm, mm. You said you raised a pertinent question regarding anatomy. Unless we know the structure, mm. how do we know the function? Yes. Mm. Unless we know the structure, mm. we will not come to know the function. Mm. Unless we know the function, mm. normal function, mm. we will not appreciate the abnormal function. Yes. And unless we know, unless we know what makes it abnormal, hmm. what makes it abnormal and what abnormalities can be predicted or what abnormalities can predicate as a disease entity, hmm. you hmm. will not come to know clinical subjects. Right, right. Now, let me come back to a common parlance of understanding. Hmm. Anatomy is not in first year because you are sensitized to know the structure. Yes. Hmm. You are sensitized to know, know where and what is located. Yes. Hmm. And the, the same anatomy has to be integrated while teaching, which is lacking. Yes. Integrated while teaching, teaching yes. physiology. Suppose, for example, if you are teaching anatomy of the heart, and at the same time, if you are teaching cardiac cycle and junctional tissues uh, or uh, the, the cardiac impulse and generation and its function, Hmm. Both together, if you relate, hmm. together if you relate, hmm. the normal functioning with the structure is very clear. Unless hmm. this foundation of anatomy and physiology is good, hmm. you will not understand pathology. Right. Hmm. Okay. Yes. And very clearly, very clearly, hmm. if you read William Boyd's pathology, textbook yes. of pathology by William Boyd, 
Hmm. In his introductory pages, hmm. he writes, writes in the first or second paragraph, he writes, hmm. as is your pathology, hmm. so is your clinical practice. Yes. Hmm. 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 Can you understand now the implication of this? Yes. Unless, unless anatomy, physiology and pathology is strong, hmm. this is the foundation of understanding clinical entity. Yes. And unless these three are being taught, hmm. Hmm. being taught, and they are interpreted properly in in hmm. the light of homeopathy. Now I am coming back. Yes. When you are talking about pathology, yes. When you said germ theory and other things. Now let us correlate. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Now let us correlate. What exactly? How exactly these diseases and and uh, were classified by Hanuman? Yes. Go back, go back to uh, classification of diseases in yes. in BK Sarkar. If you take, hmm. he classifies the diseases, surgical diseases and dynamic diseases. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now here, when he speaks about uh, dynamic diseases, hmm. he sp- hmm. he speaks about miasmatic and non-miasmatic diseases. Yes. And when he pe- he he pe- uh, again, he comes down there, comes yeah. down there, yeah. and talks about something like surgical diseases once again. Yes, yes. Once again, yeah. I, I, are you getting me? Getting yeah. me? Yes. Yeah. Which are those surgical diseases, and which are these surgical diseases, which broadly classified? Mm. Mm. We mm. need to, we need to really understand. Yes. yes. When when he classifies these surgical diseases, which are mechanical in uh, their yeah. injuries yeah. or. Uh, or traumas, or etc. They are not mechanical. They are not uh, miasmatic. Yes. Dy- they are not dynamic diseases. Yes. But there is there is a class of surgical entity. There is right. a class of surgical entity. Right. Which evolves itself right. from a dynamic derangement at the level of the vital force. Right. And comes to a stage of destruction hmm. where we may label it in any terminology that we say. Hmm. But Hanuman very cl- clearly classifies them: sporic, hmm. syphilitic, and uh, soric, psychotic, and syphilitic. Yes. You take any disease condition hmm. and try to classify this. Hmm. I will bet you. Hmm. I will bet you. Nobody can change this concept. Yes. You give me any disease concept, hmm. any disease, we can fit it in this. And Hanuman's classification of diseases was so clear, so clear was very clear in his understanding. And that is what he meant by knowledge of disease. Yes. In say, in, in, in say for example, hmm. uh, when you, we are talking about germ theory and non-germ theory. Yes. He somewhere in his organo, he talks, hmm. when the constitution, constitution yes. or the, 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 the ground, where he means the human body as ground. Yes, the terrain. It is, it is deterring. It is deterring. Yes. Those tiny microorganisms will rule. Yes. And and affect the individual. What does it mean? Yes. What does it mean? It, it means we may call it as immunity. We may call it as immunosuppressant. We may we may call it as immune compromise. We may call it as anything by the by the terminology. But he had very clearly said at that time. Yes. Somewhere down the line, your constitution has gone weak. Yes. And those microorganisms, otherwise, which were not affecting you, hmm. are affecting you now. That means there is something wrong at the base of your constitution, and that is how these organisms are playing. Yes. Does it mean? Does it not clarify that doubt? Yes. Yes. It definitely clarifies. Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, and yes. yes. So, so with the clearance of this doubt. We move yeah. ahead to the strong propagation of Hanuman's philosophy in that no matter how we interpret the organ on whichever aphorism we base our practice on, we finally, mm-hmm. as you said, are coming back to the same law that is similia similibus curenter. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. But when we come to the point of subjective expression, that is, for example, as you said, in a few seminars, some people consider the weightage to be in the mind symptom yeah. and so others yeah. consider to, uh, the weightage to be in the pathology. So the argument mm. of the person who speaks over the mind is that 
pathology is a very new concept in the materia medica and if you take mm. a lab report for example the leukocytic count has increased there are very few drugs mm. which say increased leukocyte but rather yeah. it is manifested in the form of symptoms where the mind of the person has been changed and the counter argument of the pathologist is that no even though the symptoms do manifest in the individual since modern technology or the medical technology has advanced we should also consider the lab reports as a basis for prescription so and this is one of the reasons why there are many schools of thought in homeopathy now how do we bring a union amidst these schools so that we interpret it as the same thing which hanuman said okay now uh, see what are these lab reports indicating these lab reports are indicating indicating what the disease is underlying how yes. the disease is progressing yes yes this is this is that's the only thing which is which is being indicated by these lab reports yes um yes or no yes yes this, this is only a, only see now um, uh let me go, go, come back to that little later because okay. it will be too premature at this point of time yes sir yes. uh the lab reports lab what are these lab reports lab reports are physical physical evidences that the body is responding at a pathological level or physiology of this body is altered and uh, common uh, uh, normal uh, normal values are being disturbed yes basic thing that has happened is why do these normal values get disturbed the concept of disease is the disease starts much earlier much earlier than it makes its main its appearance in the form of symptoms yes that is yes. where we differ that is yes. where we differ say for example many times today's senior most physicians also are coming to that line that yes. disease has disease begins much earlier than it makes its manifestation Yes. by the time it manifest by the time it comes to its manifestations you have already rendered the disease to be incurable yes. can you imagine yes today is that the, 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 the people are talking that language yes right yes and yes. and and let me tell you hmm. it is not it is not important it is not yes. important yes. The, to consider uh, only lab reports as evidences because unfortunately unfortunately the, today we are talking about a medical science which which thinks about only evidence based you have to show the evidence there is no doubt yes. about it yes you yes. have to show the evidence there is no doubt about it no one no intellectual uh, person with such an amount of evolution in the science of all the fronts will mm. will believe only subjective things there is there has to be objective manifestation now coming back yes uh, what is important say for example mm. Uh, when we are teaching we teaching in uh, medical education uh, mm. we say mm. what is important i'll give you two scenarios right a person comes to you mm. and tells mm. that i am absolutely all right his mm. all reports are abnormal yes mm. Mm. his all reports are abnormal mm. he he says nothing wrong with me mm. and mm. at the same time at the mm. same time mm. there is a man whose all the reports are normal mm. and he says i am not feeling well yes mm. there is something going wrong mm. which is more dangerous situation more dangerous situation according to me mm. a man who has got all normal things but feeling mm. unwell mm. is is a warning yes something is something is going wrong mm. which may impend some something later on number mm. 1 mm. now once this concept is clear mm. modern laboratory findings or mm. lab findings mm. cannot be cannot be rejected in toto yes. they are to be considered they are to be considered because that is the via media to understand how the disease is progressing yes okay it is yes. not the treatment it is not mri is not treatment x ray is not a treatment hrct is not a treatment yes they are only via media to understand the progress right yes now now if you go back the concept of disease evolved by hanuman yes from functional disorders to inflammatory induration and destructive changes from syphilitic azoric to psychotic psychotic to syphilitic that is how the disease progresses yes this is progresses there are situations now let me let me ask a counter question 
टूडेज लेट एस टेक टूडेज टूडेज पैंडेमिक सिचुएशन ऑफ कोविड राइट ओके नो कोविड वी हैव बीन एंटायर ह्यूमन कम्युनिटी और एंटायर ह्यूमन काइंड एंड द एंटायर वर्ल्ड इज टेकन फॉर ए राइट यस यस वी आर नॉट एबल टू प्रेडिक्ट एनीथिंग राइट नो अ फेलो हु इज हैविंग वेरी माइल्ड सिम्टम्स एंड अ फेलोज हु इज a coroid score is 11 out of 25 hmm. Hmm. and suddenly one fine morning that fellow dies hmm. Hmm. right right and we have got all all theories to establish you know pulmonary embolism pneumonia yes. and some respiratory failure and so many things hmm. okay hmm. and there are people who were admitted who were my close friends who were admitted 22 score out of 25 hmm. on ventilator for 4 days hmm. Took discharge against medical advice, hmm. and the fellow is absolutely fine at home today. Now, where do I explain this? Yes, yes. Where do I explain right. this? Yes. That means that means there is something, there is something which is governing the human body, and that is where why two force has to be appreciated. Yes, yes, yes. Do you agree with me? I do, sir. A fellow, ah, a fellow with the seven score dies. A fellow with 23 out of 25 score comes back. Yes. Do you mean to say? Do you mean to say that COVID in him was more dangerous than him? Same virus. Mm. 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 The progress was different. Whereas here we uh, the pathology report, the HRCT report, and the the, the scoring and the norms, uh, all the values were so abnormal that everybody said he is not going to survive. Yes. And that fellow is back home and yes. is doing absolutely fine. Last three months. He has been discharged and doing very well. Yeah. I I spoke to him yesterday, but yeah. but imagine a man of forty forty two years old, mm. for a score seven, suddenly one fine morning uh, pops off. Why? Mm. Mm. We don't know. Yes, we don't know. Yes, that is where that is where we will have to believe something, believe something today that there is a concept of vital force which Hanuman talked about. and it is the derangement of this vital force expressed externally expressed yes. externally is the disease component and whether it is 23 or 7 how that is going to receive and respond is going to depend upon uh, its vitality yes and that is that is where that is where we need to inculcate two things one is scientificity hmm. to an extent where it is going to give you signals it is going to give you ear marks it will it is going to give you the step stones of uh, disease the way in which it is progressing yes but basic major thing that i need to understand is there is something beyond yes there is something beyond and that is what exactly hanuman brought out and that is where that is where we as uh, as as homeopaths need to establish those areas and try to bring out try to bring out Uh, as much as possible, the, the, the evidences to uh, match the, the, from, from the today's needs, and then establish scientifically. Scientifically, that's the only way where we can establish ourselves. Otherwise, it all has got uh, unexplained things. Yes, it's only subjective. Yes, and again, loss of uh, disappearance of symptom is not disappearance of the disease. Yes. It's very well. It's very well well known. Hmm. The symptoms disappear doesn't mean that the disease is gone. The, it, the patient has to have total well being, total well being, yes. and it has to make itself evident in all the respects. And that is where we can say cure. Hmm. 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 Sir, but here cure is uh, cure is, is, is uh, rather a relative terminology that I can say. Yes. But but here there is one one contradictory statement by made by Hanuman himself, where he responds to Hufland, say because Hufland uh, says homeopathy only removes the symptoms but does not cure the disease, and Hanuman no. say um, isn't the removal of the symptoms themselves the curing of the disease? What else is there to cure in the individual rather than to remove the symptoms? So. Okay. How, how would your statement interpret this? See, my statement is again very clear. Huh. What are these symptoms? What are these symptoms? Where they have come from? Hmm. Hmm. These symptoms are. Hmm. These symptoms are. Hmm. 
these symptoms are external manifestations of an internal deranged vital force. Right, right. Do you agree with me? I do, yes. Disapp 100 uh, yes. Now, uh, disappearance of these symptoms hmm. does not always mean cure. That needs to be understood by us. Yes, yes. Disappearance of all the symptoms does uh, not mean. Yes, yes. Does not mean. Until and unless, hmm. until and unless, hmm. there is a total well-being which is defined. Yes, yes, yes. That so is we where must, we, we need to understand. Focus our attention on the term removal and disappearance. Yes. Yes. Removal and disappearance. Yes. Removal and disappearance is, you know, I, I, I'll give you a simple example. Yes. Uh, when I still remember that particular thing very distinctly. Yes. We were in a surgery post in final year, 19, way back in 1979. Right. Uh, there was a case of uh, thromboangitis obliterans which was presented by me in my clinical class. Right. And the fellow, you know, was a smoker, a classical uh, TAO. Right. Uh, right. He had uh, that blackish discoloration, purplish discoloration, everything was there. And yes. um, uh, it was right-sided and so many things happened. And somebody gave him like a lycopodium next day or after two days, the hmm. burning pain disappeared. Right, right. Burning pain disappeared. Disappeared. Okay. Right. Disappearance of burning pain. Does it mean that cure of TAO? Disappearance no, of no. burning pain was an evident evidence of gangrene settling. Yes, yes. Who? This is what exactly needs to be interpreted by knowledge of this. Yes. And he had he had line of demarcation in the middle of his uh, foreleg. Right. And after two months, we saw the same person with uh, above knee amputation of his right limb. Right. This right. is what exactly needs to be understood with the hairline difference of removal and disappearance. Right. And that is right. where that is where I hit that nail on the head. That knowledge of disease, you combine everything. You combine yes. everything. Yes. yes. And that's why Animal, if he had no knowledge of all these things at his disposal, yes. probably he would have changed the entire medical field. Yes. 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 Uh, moving on, sir. Uh, a rather. To conclude the session, I have one final question which per, uh, pertains to the limitation of our subject. Because I personally think if we know the limitation of our subject, the boundaries of our subject, it will only help us push them further. Absolutely so, right. Right now, where is it hmm. that homeopaths or young homeopaths are going wrong in not recognizing the limitations of their subject so that it sort of falls into the section of magical healing? Right. Uh, now, knowing the limitations of homeopathic system is the first step, I would say, yes. with my, you know, I have been in teaching for last 40 years. What is being taught in the colleges? Right. More emphasis has to be made on limitations. Right. Because... The modern science is progressing so fast, so fast. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, let me tell you, not that we, Hanuman did not write these things in Organon. Right. Hanuman also has written these things in Organon. And a, a, a classical example, which, which can be given, you know, if you read aphorism number 185. Right. When he talks about when he talks about local melodies, when he talks yes. about surgical diseases. Yes. Say for example, it is very clearly written. If you read the commentary that is given by various people and uh, to name uh, you read DK Sarkar's commentary. Yes. It's very very clearly explained that uh, many things in one or two sentences if we try to understand one or two sentences, it makes lot of clarifications. Yes. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. He says, uh, union, uh, uh, alignment of fracture fragments of the bone. Right. It is written there. Right. Can we, can we today teach a student that a fracture has got these a couple of drugs? You give Arnica, you give Calcarea Pass, you give uh, Symphytum and the fracture will heal. Will it be possible? No. It will not be. It is my duty as a teacher to impart this particular limitation. Yes. This particular. Because, because, 
very clearly animal has said it we cannot blame the system we cannot blame human he has very clearly said it is we people it is we people who are wrong in our interpretation yeah. i cannot say that i can treat any any fracture case no it is it is not yeah and it's very clearly written there reunion uh, or bringing the fracture fragments in one alignment maybe by any means today yeah. uh, today the ad- science has advanced advanced you have to accept it yes yeah. say for example say for example if reduction reduction immobilization and rehabilitation are the steps of management of a fracture fine mm-hmm. reduction is what reduction is bringing the bone fra- fractured fragments into one alignment yeah. by what means him by what means it is left to you it is it may be open reduction it may be closed reduction it may be methods so it may be wiring it may be rod it may be whatever what god knows what orthopedics has made so much of progress but why you have to understand alignment right. bringing that in alignment is also written by whom but then that is where we will have to accept that yes. here is a stage where we must have knowledge of this is and this is what exactly needs to be done this is not to be treated only with our drugs Yes. That knowledge, that limitation has to be understood. Yes. Let me go back to t- two more points, which will right. clear up major things. Right. Suturing of gaping of wounds. Right. Is also written there. Yes. Why? Suturing is suturing is bringing the two flaps of the skin together. Right. By means of suturing, you are just me, me bringing them together right. so that the healing right. comes back faster. Is it right. written or no? Yes, it is written. Yes, it is written. Number. Then he is a, writes one more sentence, which uh, which many of the times we had an argument on the dais, right. and I had to literally bring the book and show them that this is what is written here. <laughs> this is where this is where the teaching has to change. Yes. Reason is, see what he says: letting up, letting up, or letting out pent up discharges from the cavities of the body. Right. is a must if it is coming as a as a obstet obstacle in the process of cure right mark my sentence yes yes let, let letting out pent up discharges from the right. cavities hmm. cavities which is coming as an obstacle in the process of dynamic cure right is is a must now you go back and read which are those cavities skull is a cavity yes abdomen yes. is a cavity yes. chest is a cavity yes and now intra- intracranial bleeds so yes. extra dural bleeds unless you remove that pressure from the brain what method you use it is up to you yes but yes. that has to be taught the, from the cranial cavity which is coming today it is coming in the way of your process of response of the patient yes. that the particular discharge has to be let out unless that pressure from the brain is taken out the patient is not going to come out yes is yes. this not written it is it is yes it is yes. written yes. say for example there is a splenic rupture there is a appendicular rupture or there is a perforation there is a ruptured topic gestation what do you do with your drugs here is a, here is a point where animal says proper knowledge of the disease now you must possess that knowledge of disease right. what are the implications of peritonitis what are the implications what are the clinical manifestations of perforation what are the clinical mass manifestations of a rupture of an organ inside is it leading to peritonitis no yes how do we know this and where are we where are we teaching these things in the class most of the times when we i personally talk this whenever we talk the people get discouraged they said you talk only limitations and people will get discouraged no i said no you must teach that because because whether you like it or no after graduation the fellow is going to treat somebody's life true yes and that life has come to you surrendering himself it's my duty as a teacher to impart a proper thing and that is where people should read these and interpret the way in which it is to be interpreted yes. and try to customize for today try to customize for today Yes. and try to understand bring all the things together yes and then only we are possibly we are going to make the system of humanity survive yes and last sentence of mine yes. is today aditya today yes. i must really admire admire you and your team 
for taking this venture thank you sir uh today is a day aditya yes it is a time yes. for all the medical faculties yes all the medical branches yes should act as complementary to each other rather than competitive definitely yes yes and that is the only way to make this entire world a peaceful place for living safely yes yes i i i think i think you have redefined what hanuman uh, in his very first aphorism told as rapid gentle and permanent healing it is only possible yes. through complementing each other and not complementing or each competing other. with each other yes yes so the, that was that was a wonderful conclusion by you and uh, mm. believe that uh, this is the direction that we must take going ahead beat yeah. beat a homeopath or any other form of alternative medicine or a student of uh, today's modern medicine as they call it must work in union and complement each other in order to better the health of everyone not just absolutely people. absolutely do you do you agree what i said i do you agree what i said i completely agree sir and and yeah, as you said they must know their limitations and they must know their possibilities in order to complement yeah and for that for that do you know what is the crux for that hmm. for that you need to you need to understand basic foundation of anatomy physiology pathology medicine yes 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 and that is where what is the linkage and a logical linkage yes yes definitely do you agree with me definitely sir i completely yes. agree i completely yes. agree and and i oh. must thank you from the bottom of my heart for uh, ah. giving us your precious time and uh, clearing a lot of doubts i i suppose not only with the young people that are today in homeopathy but also the seniors who sometimes uh, as you said might interpret it a little differently but today i think you opened the doors to a lot of questions that were closed and uh, i think with our uh, small podcast we could help bring out these ideas of yours um, yeah. and it might help even if it helps at least one person in the future and if he propagates it to hundreds of students we have done our job so we thank aditya, you very much aditya i i have made one principle in my life yes sir okay ha huh. you you change you change at least five students in your in one year yes not that i have taken a contract of changing everybody yes yes, yes. even if i am able to influence five people in a year yes in 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 40 years imagine how many people it must yes. have been 200 people yes yes no my life is my life is done that yes. is how i look at it yes yes and that is a wonderful Whether way of looking at it sir because yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> hanuman uh, looking back at hanuman himself he during his lifetime with him in his close circle he probably had only five or six students who were devout students and they yeah, spread yeah. the knowledge throughout the world uh, so absolutely uh, right absolutely yes. right yes so we thank you very much dr uh, mukund anand urchankar for giving us your precious time and uh, we hope we can have more sessions like this with you um, anytime yes, anytime sir. so anytime. thank thank you thank you very much sir thank, thank you very much welcome welcome okay okay